Hello, for this tutorial, we're going to cover how to have an object in your scene, set it up to be dynamic. When the level starts, we're going to make a kinematic, such as keyframed, so it doesn't move. And then when we hit a key press for jumping, for example, we're going to add gravity, making it dynamic again, just using the actor without using the mover. So to start, I have just opened up a character template and created a new template called keyframe to dynamic and I just have a regular character level in here. So I'm going to go into my models character folder. I'm going to open up this default character sphere. I want to make sure that it is visible when it's in the level. So I'm going to select the mesh. It is visible. I'm going to make sure this box is checked. It has an actor and a character already. I'm going to make sure I set this to dynamic. We give it a mass of 90 kilograms right here. And the body was already on this, so we can just leave this on here. So then we want to save this guy. So now we've created a uh, character here who is going to be dynamic. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag him out into my level. And I'm going to raise him up in the sky a little bit. I've deleted all the player starts except for this one, which will spawn my player every time facing this way so that when I run the level I can see my little object here fall or not. So I'm going to save my level, I'm going to hit play, and you can see it falls down. Now it should be completely dynamic, and as I hit it, you can see it moves around the level and is dynamic. So that's not the intended uh, result that we'd like. So we're going to go to our script editor. We're going to open up the project flow callbacks.lua and our global.scriptflownodes file that will um, allow us to define a new custom flow node that we're going to create. Basically, our flow node is going to call a function that's already in the engine that's called set kinematic. So let's go ahead and write that function now. It's going to be function project flow callbacks dot set underscore kinematic. Will be T for table. And we want to make sure that we get the actor here. And we also want a local bool so that we know whether it is set or not. And we want to check that if our actor is not nil. Then we want to do stingray.actor.set kinematic, and we're going to pass the actor and the bool in here. We're going to end that and end our function. Save this. So now we go into our flow nodes. I'm going to copy this name of the function here. We're going to create a new custom flow node here. I just copied that. I've got my function name that I'm going to add in here. So this will be project flow callbacks dot function name set kinematic. Our arguments are going to be actor, and that will be actor, and the next one will be bool. And this will be bool. Our function, of course, we've already pasted in here is set kinematic. The project just can be fine in the project there. And for our brief, we're just going to say sets an actor to kinematic true or false. And we're going to call this node set actor kinematic. So the concept behind this is we're going to have this actor in the scene, which we've already put in our level, and he's going to be dynamic. We're going to use flow to set him to be keyframed and be able to move him around, etc. whenever you set the, the movement around following a different tutorial. But this time, it, it'll have gravity when you jump. So we've got our function set up here and our node here to define it. So if we go into our level nodes, level flow, and we go to project, 
There's our set actor kinematic node. So let's get started with some level flow here. We'll go back to our level viewport. Here's our guy we're going to use. So I'm going to select him, go back into level flow, and I'm going to create a level unit. We definitely want to get this unit's actor, so we're going to do unit, get unit actor. You can plug this node in here. The index is 1. And the name of our actor, I believe, is character. And you can see that will autofill here, and you can just select character. Next thing we want to do is we want this guy, after he falls down to the earth, we want to be able to make him move again so that he's jumping up in the air. And then we're going to check to see if he's in the air or not, if he's jumping or not, if he's falling or not, and then tell him whether to be kinematic or, or dynamic. So back in our level flow, we're going to create an input for a keyboard button. And for this test, I'm just going to name this button R. Easy to reach with my fingers. We want a few things to happen here in the flow, so we want to make sure the next step that we do is add a sequence. So under flow controls, we're going to add a sequence here, and this is just going to make sure that things happen when this button is pressed in the proper order. So we've got a sequence here, and the first thing we want to do is, if this is pressed, is we want to set this guy to the actor kinematic. False. So this means if I push the button, he's going to become dynamic. The actor, of course, we are going to plug into this unit. We're going to do a bunch of other things here in the middle, so I'm going to slide this guy a little far out. And we're going to have to duplicate this and create another one because we're also going to want to set this to true at some point. So now we have a false node and a true node, and they're all going to pertain to this actor. The second thing on our key press we want to do is we want to add an actor impulse. So we're going to go to physics, actor, add actor impulse. The unit will be our unit, the actor will be our actor, for my impulse, I'd like him to go straight up in the air. So I'm going to go ahead and just do 0, 0, and 500 up. This will be the second thing that happens in my sequence. So I'm going to add the out from the 2 into the in on my add actor impulse. So the first thing that happens when we push this button is going to set him to be dynamic. And then we're going to give him an impulse and shoot him 500 up in the air. Now the next thing that we want to do is we're going to have to cast a ray to see if I'm in the air or not. So I start typing in raycast by hitting the tab key and you can see we got a raycast physics world node here. I'm going to put a slight delay here in the flow control before I call this. I'm just going to name that as 0.1, 10 to the second there, and then I'm going to call this raycast. I'm also going to call this raycast as soon as we load the level. So I'm going to do event, level loaded, and I want to make sure I call this as soon as we load the level just in case for some reason when I start the level or my object is spawned or whatever, if it's in the air, I'm going to make sure that I know that I'm calling it right when the level loads to check to see if he's in the air. From the actor here, I also want to get the actor's position. So I'm going to go to physics actor get actor position. This is our actor and this is where I'm going to be calling the from on our raycast, the position of the actor. So now we need to check some conditions here. 
we need to know the distance we are from the ground. So I want to do a greater than. This is going to be under math. Numeric, greater than. So I want to know if my distance, which will be A, is greater than, let's just say, 0.1 to the ground. Then I get a value here of true or false. So we're going to create a branch. And this value will then be our condition for one of our branches. We're going to check this branch on level update. So let's do an event, level update. We're going to want to check this branch every time we update the level. So if this branch is true, that means I'm still up in the air, then I want to come in here and I want to call this raycast again. I want to keep calling this raycast on level update to make sure that I know when I'm in the air or when I'm not. We're going to do another branch, so I'm just going to copy and paste this guy. The condition, again, will come out of our greater than value. And we're going to check this on the raycast. So when I come out of my raycast, I'm going to check and say, hey, am I false? If I am false, then set my actor to kinematic true, which is going to set him back to keyframed, which is where your controls will take over again when you have those set up. On level loaded, we also want to make sure we set this actor kinematic false true. It's on level loaded as well. Camping. This is when our object is up in the air. If we shoot him or move him around or he bumps into something, he doesn't flip on his side or land funny. And of course, this will completely depend on your character, but because I'm using this particular character, I'm going to set some angular damping on him. So my unit will be the level unit that we have. My actor will be my actor. I'm going to set my damping value to 1,000, pretty strong. I'm going to call this if this branch is true, meaning if this condition is true that I am up in the air, I'm going to set my angular damping while I'm in the air so that I don't flip out or fall sideways or fall down on the ground. So we have our key button pressed. We sequence some things out of here. First set this guy to be kinematic false, which means he's dynamic. The way he's in the air, he'll fall. And if he's pressed and he's not in the air, then we'll push him up with a actor impulse of 500Z. And that should push him up into the air. And we do a raycast, of course, to check and see if he's in the air, if he's above 0.1 from the ground. And that value is true. Then we set him to continually stay dynamic. Otherwise, if it's below 0.1 to the ground or on the ground, we set him to be kinematic, which is keyframed again. And one last thing we want to do here is connect this true value to set kinematic in case this returns true as well. We also need to make sure that in our raycast, we have this set to statics. And the collision filter, we're just going to put here as default. We want the direction of our ray trace, of course, to go x, y, minus 1 in the direction of z down. That way we're going to check down. And I'm just going to set my length to 1,000 for now to make sure that this ray gas is going to reach far enough for us. So we have a statics collision, default filter, shooting down at 1,000 length. Let's test our level.
And you can see our object fell down to the ground. Now if I shoot it, it's completely set here as static. And if you have your controls set up following the other tutorial, you can move your character around now with your key presses. If I hit the R button, he will jump and fall properly. Now while he's in the air, he is dynamic. So if I shoot him, he will move while he's taking hits. However, you'll see he stays upright because I have given him an upright constraint. If I continue to hit R, he will continue to jump because I did not set any limits on that. So while he's in the air, he is dynamic but constrained with a dampening. And when he hits the ground, he is completely kinematic, meaning keyframed, and he cannot move at all. So just to cover again, we have our unit here in the level, which we can find in the asset browser and just cover again real quick. This guy has an actor on him which is set up as dynamic with 90 kilograms. His mesh type is a capsule. And a shape template I set to sweeper just so it would interact more accurately with things, but you can set this shape type to default or character, or whichever you would like it to be for your interactions of your physics world. It did have a mover, but we do ignore that for this case. In the level flow, we have that unit we put into our level. We get the actor. We perform some checks on this actor, including a ray cast, to see if he's up in the air or on the ground or not. We do some checks here with some branches to see if I am in the air. I want to set my actor continually to be non-kinematic. And if I am on the ground, no longer in the air, I want to set my actor to be kinematic, which is keyframed. Once your actor is set as keyframed, you can then move him around your level with your um, control keys, however you'd like to set them up, based on the tutorial that is also on this channel on how to move around a non-physics-based character. Basically, in this tutorial, we've taken the non-physics-based character and added a little bit of physics to him when he's in the air. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and look further to more in the future. Thank you.